the regular season is winding down to an end. We are inside the final cohort series now for the Sherwood Park Crusaders as they take on the Grand Prairie Storm in back-to-back weekends. It's Brendan Escott. It's Zach Marks. It's another edition of Coffee with the Crew. Appreciate you tuning in as always. Looking forward this episode to chatting with both veteran defenseman Loden Schoffler and rookie forward Zach Maxwell, who picked up his first Alberta Junior Hockey League uh, assist and point in the in the process and a couple of games that were as closely contested as uh, as a lot of them have been all year Zach and uh, first one going into extra time on Friday night and then the following night a, a solid response by the Crusaders you you were taking them both in and writing the post game report up for uh, SherwoodParkCrusaders.com so uh, just a couple of key observations from you on, on what you saw out of the crew this weekend. Primarily, I think you have to go, you have to look at the goaltending for Sherwood Park. Lachlan Gordon getting the start on Friday night in the 4-3 shootout loss. He was stellar, a huge reason why Sherwood Park was able to push that game into overtime and then inevitably the shootout, making two or three massive stops in overtime while getting a little bit of puck luck. Uh, Grand Prairie hitting the post three separate times in the overtime period alone. But, and then the next night, Carson Chairback comes in after sitting the last two games for Sherwood Park. And he comes in, he makes 35 saves on the night and never really looked out of place in the net for Sherwood Park, stymieing Grand Prairie for the better part of three periods. So the Crusaders move from six, eight and two entering the weekend to uh, seven, eight and three after the two games. And not that the standings will mean a whole heck of a lot, but they do have a chance to leapfrog Bonneville in the final weekend to play into a second spot in the Alberta Junior Hockey League's North Division. The uh, Fort McMurray Oil Barons, Zach, they have ceased play for the the rest of the year. They're not uh, playing this uh, past weekend here, nor the upcoming one. So they'll, uh, with their 27 points, what a season it was for them, remain atop things. Uh, but overall, uh, another scrappy North Division series to round things out and a final showcase for uh, uh, some of these players and an opportunity to impress ahead of next season for some others. Yeah, the rookies have been a huge part of this team for Sherwood Park. You've got the likes of Zach Maxwell. You've got Evan Arnold, uh, James Gibson, Liam Hughes, Big names for the future for Sherwood Park that have been given big roles this season. And then you've got the guys like Loden Schoffler, who are, I guess, the last hurrahs this upcoming weekend as they uh, close out their junior careers with another two games. And then we'll see where the future takes them. But the big part for Sherwood Park is getting the rookies the ice time to, to help de- them develop. Guys like, on the, especially on the back end, like Kale Ashcroft. Brendan McCartney, Brett Urslack, the names that jump off the page at you as potential stalwarts of this defensive core for the next couple of years. And Ashcroft had a goal and an assist on the, in Saturday's game. And really the dagger in that game, the 3-1 goal, and you were talking off air about the pretty Gibson goal set up by Maxwell's first assist, but uh, really at the juncture of the game that Ashcroft scored in game two, that kind of drove the final nail in. So you're starting to see those contributions already, but you also saw Loden Schoffler arrive on this team in, in the spring season, so to speak, and immediately start clipping. At, at a point per game pace with the, how he was distributing the puck out of the back end and they were uh, relying on him heavily you know you could see the the faith that Jeff Wojtka showed in him not only as somebody to contribute on the ice but also to sort of show the ropes to this young back end that you're talking about uh, sort of being ushered in next year into bigger and more important minutes. Yeah Lone Schaffler kind of the odd man out for the Edmonton Oil Kings with the 20 uh, year old cap in the WHL Sherwood Park, the benefactors, as he comes down and plays some of the best hockey of his career, a huge part of this defense core, along the along with the likes of Matthew Shatsky, who we spoke with last week, and just really solidified the decor heading into that Bonneville series where they did take six out of the eight games. And then the veteran presence on the back end, like you mentioned, in games, tough games against the Brooks Bandits, like the 9-2 loss in the first game. Just the games where it's tough to keep your head up, helping to right the ship, so to speak. 
Let's connect with Loden Schoffler ahead of our interview with Zach Maxwell. First, the veteran defenseman on Coffee with the Crew. All right, Loden, so you guys hit the road and we're up in Grand Prairie for a pair of games to kick off your final cohort series. And uh, the Storm, uh, it was a great opening game on uh, Friday, heading to the extra time, all the way to the shootout before uh, you guys rebounded nicely on Saturday. So uh, let's just set things up here by talking about how you think uh, things went in a general sense over the weekend. Yeah, I think everybody was excited to play somebody different I think the first game against somebody different we've only played three teams this year so it's always exciting but uh I think our first period was tough in the first game uh long bus ride I guess and um we came back better in the second and the third and ended up getting a point which was good and um I think uh the second game was one of our best games in a long time I think we used each other well and limited our turnovers and it was just a good game yeah so what's it like being one of the veteran defensemen on a roster that is a little bit younger in the Alberta Junior Hockey League? I think, um, yeah, we're a lot younger than any any team I've played on, I feel like. And I think um, just helping out the young guys and uh, being leaned on more, and that's always awesome, and being counted on, putting in situations, and and just having them knowing that you need to be the veteran guy that you are and it's good. Adam Mana starts uh, Lachlan Gordon in goal in uh, in the first game of the weekend, and he's he's really kind of surprised me. Certainly, uh, probably less so you guys getting to see him in practice every day. But he's uh, after turning aside thirty three or thirty six, he's really cementing himself as an Alberta Junior League goaltender here in my eyes. What's been your assessment of him? Yeah, I think he's playing really well um, this weekend. He played really good and. He it starts in practice. He uh, he works really hard and he's always battling and he just puts his head down, goes to work. And I think it shows in the games. He just fights to the last second and he battles. So shifting gears a little bit, this is the coming up weekend will be your final two games in junior hockey. What's your mindset going into something as big as this? I think just stay in the moment and kind of uh, I, it's your last two games and just have fun and play hard. Like you don't know who else is watching. And I think just, I think have fun is the main part. I last two games out of in like four years and it'll be uh, different not playing junior hockey next year. When you look back on it, is there any career moment, WHL or otherwise, that stands out? I have a feeling there's probably one. Yeah, I think uh, for sure was um, winning the WHL in uh, Prince Albert. I, like, there's nothing like winning. I, like, I mean, that was, a, that was the coolest year of hockey for sure. And to follow up on that, you're playing with a group of guys who at least some of them didn't get the opportunity to push for that last year when it seemed like a lot of stuff was aligning for them to, to make a deep run. Has there been sort of any message that you, you know, as somebody that did get, go all the way, what are you able to relay to a dressing room full of you know new guys that are hungry for that same experience at this level? I just think like, like I said, there's nothing like winning and there's, there's no, you won't be closer with a group of guys after winning. You'll be so much closer. And um, yeah, there's just, there's just nothing like it. It's totally worth it. It's the short summer and the hard work. It's totally worth it. So what's it like playing games when there's no real end goal for a team? I think you just have to find your own motivation and, there's always people watching and you're playing for your teammates. And I know like our record and you want, you want to win as many games, you're a competitor and you just always want to win. So I, I think you just got to find your own motivation and ways, ways to win. And yeah. Some of the guys out there will have the opportunity to chase post-secondary scholarships down. Um, you know, there's there's different ways to find that motivation. And another one is we're seeing a lot of this, actually, is some of the younger players getting their first or second, you know, AJHL point or their first career assist. We saw Brandon McCartney score his first goal, uh, you know, special for you as a veteran to see all these guys ticking off these accomplishments along the way, too. 
Yeah, it's good for, I know it's always cool scoring your first goal and, you know, even your first point. I think uh, Miller had his first point this weekend too. And it's good to see young guys playing well. And I think like our young guys have to play and they're playing well and playing in big roles. And it's just good to see. And so heading into this uh, final two games, strategy wise, you know, less so of a, without the sentimental mindset for you. I mean, that's, that's going to be there and, and, you know, you're going to handle the emotions as they come, but for you guys uh, knowing what you just learned about Grand Prairie, what can you take into this upcoming two games as, as the, um, you know, maybe even your final opportunities for uh, some of these players to showcase themselves like we've been talking about. Yeah, I think final two games and just leave it all out there. Um, yeah, I think we know what they're doing and how they play. And I think, um, we have a long week for pra practice to get ready and we know we've seen them twice now, so we know what to expect. So I think it's going to be a good weekend. Big thanks to Loden Schoffler as always for his time. And now from a veteran, we move to a rookie in the Alberta junior league who picked up his first career point at this level over the weekend against uh, Grand Prairie. It's Zach Maxwell and Zach uh, first congratulations. Second, uh, why don't you just take us through, uh, you know, experiencing because the pass was pretty man. The pass was pretty. We can't lie about that. Yeah. Thanks guys. Uh, you know, it was a good play by Nelly. He uh, brought the puck up the wall and he made a nice play. He cycled it to me in the corner and I just luckily saw Gibby on my left shoulder and I just made it past a Gib and he had a nice finish. Good hard shot. So what has the experience been like as a rookie in the Alberta Junior Hockey League, especially during such a strange season? You know, it's, it's definitely a big jump, but uh, I'm very thankful that I've got a good group of guys around me. You know, a lot of veterans have like reached out to me and asked me like how I'm doing and stuff like that, you know. It's really key for you know, obviously a rookie is going to be a little nervous going into it. And then you have guys like that coming up and asking how you're doing and stuff like that. It's really helpful. You know, it like, like settles in for you or whatever. And, you know, it's just a good feeling to have when those guys are in your corner. And transitioning from a time where you were, you know, maybe a standout at a, at a minor league level and then coming up to the junior A rankings and you're not necessarily in the lineup every night. So, you know, how are you uh, adjusting to still keeping that work ethic as hard as it can? Is that making you even a hungrier player in that sense? Oh, for sure. I mean, every practice I want to give it 110% so I can stay in the lineup. And when it comes to games, I want to do everything I can, you know, to stay there. So like I'm just trying to do everything that Matt has been telling me to do. And he's done a really good job of you know, like giving me advice, what to do and those meetings after practices. So like all of that's really helpful. And yeah, like, like I said, I just want to always give 110% to try to stay in the lineup. So. So coming off a game, a game against Grand Prairie last night, uh, what, what was your assessment of the way your line played and maybe just how the team played? Well, I thought the team played pretty well. I felt that, uh, I mean, we might have had a little bit of a slow start, but I think that we came on and we, you know, we were working low in the corner and we got pucks on net and, you know, stuff like that. GP is a good team, but I think that we just, you know, wanted more. We wanted to get a win there and get out of the losing column. So I think that we, it just came down to us wanting it more. So, and yeah, our line played good. Uh, you know, I was with uh, Sadowski and Finney to start and then I uh, moved down to Gibby's line, but Gibby's Jeff definitely helped me there and he, finished with that shot so pretty good um when you talk about coming off of the, a long uh, road trip last weekend and then playing one immediately this weekend on i guess you had about four days notice by the time we finally heard that this was in fact your final cohort opponent so um did you learn anything on the road to, just in terms of you know how things are working on a road trip with covid uh when you were playing brooks that helped you out this weekend and that bounce back game two Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing is, you know, having a good first shift, uh, like get the bus legs out, you know, like the saying, like give a hit or take a hit, you know, getting yourself in the game. I've definitely making that jump to the junior level. You always got to be ready. So I think like going out there, my first shift, throwing a body, throwing my body around, whatever, taking a hit definitely helped me uh, get into the game more. So how was the, I guess, getting used to the difference in play style from Brooks compared to Grand Prairie? I think, uh, both teams play very hard. Obviously, I think Brooks may be a little more skilled, but uh, I mean, they're both very good teams and it was a good series with both of them. So uh, yeah, like I said, it was a good series though. 
in this final weekend, Zach, uh, your final chance this year to make an impression on the coaching staff uh, heading into next season and as a rookie sort of cement your, your role next year, you know, what, uh, what, what are the key things you're focusing on? And is that something that, you know, you guys are thinking about as, as the season winds down? I think the biggest thing for me is uh, I just want to focus on my plus minus. I don't want to go out there, you know, and get scored on a lot. So I always want to be in the positive column. Um, and doing like the little things, right. You know, getting the puck out, taking a hit or throwing my read around or getting pucks on net, whatever, just a little thing. So I can stay in the lineup. And like you said, make a good impression on coach Matt going into next year. So. And with that, uh, we'll, we'll put a wrap on this. This will be the final in between time. I suppose that we get to chat with uh, a player here on coffee with the crew. So Zach, uh, congratulations on your first uh, career point and hopefully many more to come in a Crusaders uniform. In the meantime, Brendan Escott, Zach Marks saying so long. We'll catch you next time on Coffee with the Crew.